Well, hello, hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. Uh, this week I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to talk about a couple of photographs that I uh, showcased in my last video from the California Redwoods. And I just wanted to touch upon a couple of things regarding mostly processing and some of my thoughts on why we process uh, images the way we do. Now, before we get into that really quickly, uh, this coming Wednesday and the Wednesdays following that, uh, I have a new segment on my channel where I'll be uh, critiquing photographs that have been submitted by my audience. I'm, I've teamed up with Alistair Ben. Alistair has the same uh, type of thing on, on his channel. So I'll be critiquing images on his channel as well, and he'll be critiquing images on mine. So stay tuned for that. We usually go over one or two images per video, and hopefully if it's reasonably popular or, or people enjoy it, then that might be something that will continue uh, well into the future. So check it out on Wednesday and let me know what you think. All right, without further delay, let's get stuck right into this week's video. Okay, the first uh, image that I wanted to just kind of go over with you is one that I took recently down in the, uh, the Redwoods in California. And the reason why I brought this image up is because having a YouTube channel gives me a great opportunity to uh, show my images to a reasonably large audience, which is great. Uh, I mean, after all, you spend all this time taking these photographs it's nice to have or show these photographs to an audience. And YouTube is one way that I can do that. Uh, also Instagram, Flickr, and Vero. Uh, but one of the downfalls of having a larger audience is that, of course, everybody has an opinion, especially, especially when it comes to processing. Now, this particular image here, uh, for the most part, I was quite happy with the way that I processed this photograph. This is the final result here. And, um, but there were a couple of people that thought that perhaps this was just too flat, didn't have any contrast. And I totally agree. Uh, it, it doesn't have a lot of contrast if you compare it to the original file. Here's the original file here. It's just, uh, bring up the full crop here. But you see, one of the reasons why we process the images that we do a certain way is because usually not because it has to has to be the right way or the wrong way. It's because of a feeling or an emotion that we had at that time. That's the way I, I process my photographs. When it comes to scenes like this, the reason why it's so dark and moody and contrasty is because I'm actually just exposing for the highlights. I didn't want my highlights to be blown out. So I take an exposure for the highlights and whatever happens to the shadows, I'm fine with. So of course, we're gonna get this really dark brooding image. And actually, if we bring up the exposure, say I exposed for the shadows, we'd have more of an image like this, which is more along the lines of my final edit which is this here. And the reason why I process my photographs this way is because for the most part, I prefer my shadows to be quite open and light. Uh, I'm not, when I, was, when I was in this area taking these photographs, I certainly didn't feel any moodiness or darkness to the image would improve it. I actually felt quite open and alive. I just love the open shadows. And here's a, an iPhone shot that I took that I absolutely love. This was more along the lines of what it actually looked like. There was some really lovely details and light coming through the ferns and the, the shrubs at the base here. Uh, I could see some great details in some of the shadowed areas. And of course, then we have the highlights, which tend to be quite bright. Uh, so you do have to tone those down a little bit. But overall, I just thought that the, the moment was such a lovely one. It wasn't dark and brooding that uh, this image here kind of portrays. So that's the direction that I take my uh, processing. 
depends on my mood and how I want to uh, portray that photograph to my audience and how I, how I want it to look. Uh, and I'm sure we all do it that way. But of course, having a YouTube channel, people will instantly say, well, you should have processed it this way or you should do it this way. No, I shouldn't do it that way. I should do it the way that I want to. And I re really want to highly encourage you to process photographs the way that you want them to look, not what other people or what you think other people will want them to look, if that makes sense. So for this photograph here, uh, really, it's just main about for me. It's just maintaining those highlights. I just want them to be as bright as possible, without them getting clipped or too bright. So that's about as high as I can get there. Uh, you could also use the whites if we press the Option key on a Mac. You can see that as we bring the whites up, you you can kind of control how bright they're going to be. And as soon as you start seeing the white like that, then they're too bright. So I usually just bring them to a point where they're just starting to get overexposed like that. And when it came to the shadows, it wasn't a matter of me wanting details in those shadows, but I did want the shadows to be quite a bit brighter. So I brought up the, the shadows like so, like so. And I also brought up the blacks like so. And of course, the reason why it looks so flat is was, well, we have flattened it out because we brought the highlights up, we brought the shadows, but also there's so much moisture in the air that, that it is going to take a lot of that contrast out. And this is how I wanted the photograph to look, not like that. Um, yes, there's more contrast, clarity, there's more definition in the beams of light uh, and so on and so forth but I actually felt that I wanted the whole image to have this overall ethereal look, misty, uh, kind of damp, and uh, had these godlike beams of light with, have, with a beautiful quality to them. So I guess in a, <laughs> to try and, try and sum this up, I highly recommend that you process your images the way that you want them to look. And if you have a certain mood in mind, uh, or you want to say you want to exchange skies, or you want to put things in, light beams in, whatever you want to do, the sky's the limit. I don't have an issue with that at all. I think the hardest part with processing is trying to define what it is before you start processing because I find that really helps in the long run. If you can kind of figure out, well, what you want to do beforehand and then work towards that goal, that helps. If you're just kind of sliding sliders willy-nilly and not really knowing what you want to achieve with your photograph, then that makes it just that much more difficult for yourself. So this is kind of a, a, a tip there. And the same with this photograph here. So this was a this one here is actually an iPhone shot, which I absolutely love because I love the angle of view. It has an ultra wide on it. Uh, unfortunately, on my GFX uh, 100S, the widest lens I have is a 23 millimeter. So this was the widest that I could get with that same scene, just not quite as wide. And again, I've really opened up those shadows because that's what I wanted in the final results. I wanted it to be open, ethereal, uh, have this really nice quality of light to it rather than this deep moody forest which I didn't feel at all at the time. Okay now this photograph here was uh, one of the last images I took before we had to leave uh, the redwoods which was really unfortunate because the light was just absolutely stunning. Um, and this has some just absolutely wonderful qualities to it that uh, I really try to achieve in a lot of my uh, photographs without <laughs> too much success, uh, to be honest with you. It's not very often that we get light like this. Uh, but there are a couple of things in here that uh, I, I needed to address just to kind of bring the best out, out of the photograph. And there are a couple of things in here that uh, I found just a little bit distracting. First off, 
we have some sticks in that that are really hard to avoid. So I don't have a problem with cloning some of that stuff out. Uh, this branch here I found a little bit distracting. And I remember at the time I had trouble figuring out what to do with it. Uh, so what I ended up doing in the final uh, processed photograph is just cloning out the top section of it so it wasn't leading you out of the frame. Now one of the things that you can do with light is try to draw your attention to certain areas with it. And I find that when you have kind of a shaded light like this, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of a uh, blue cast to it, whereas <clears throat> the direct sunlight here is much warmer in tone. So I don't actually mind enhancing that a little bit just to kind of draw your attention to it. So for this image here, what I ended up doing was, uh, well, first of all, we're just going to bring the the blacks up as far as possible and then the whites which are the brightest area is in here but I really would like to brighten this spot here so we can bring the whites up just a little bit say to there and we'll darken that top bit a little bit later let me just bring that down just a tad so this section here, what I'd like to do is just warm it up a little bit, but leave this quite cool. Because as I said before, uh, warm tones tend to come forward, whereas cooler tones tend to recede. So by warming up these tones a little bit more, we can actually bring that light forward somewhat. So we'll just go into the, the mask here and we'll just pick a brush and I'm just going to make the brush a little bit bigger and we're just going to paint this just roughly through here like so and all I'm going to do is just warm it up ever so slightly now of course you don't want to overdo it because that will just look fake just ever so slightly warm that up maybe add a little bit of magenta something like that and you can see already that um, it's really brought that light alive just by adding that slight contrast. The top section here, what I'm going to do is grab a linear gradient, like so, and just bring the whites down ever so slightly like that. And we could cool it down, but that might be just a bit too much. See, it's starting to look too obvious. So you have to be really subtle with this. Um, yeah, it's just something like that's fine. Actually, that's warmed it up. Let's bring it down to minus one, something like that. So let's go back to this section here. We warmed it up by eight. So let's bring it up to five, something like that. And then a couple of things I do to this. Um, Let's grab a linear gradient again. Just go down there. It's going to darken that even more, like so. And then I would probably bring this into uh, Photoshop because I'd really like to just concentrate on some of these branches here and brighten those up to just add contrast and depth. But we'll try. It. We'll we'll attempt to do it in Lightroom here. So what I'm going to do is. Um, Let's see here. We can grab the brush and see the, the nice thing about luminosity masks is that you can just pinpoint uh, those bright areas very, very quickly and easily without affecting anything else in the in the image. But I'm not sure if this is going to work. So let's let's see what we can do here. So we'll just bring up the whites. See, it works not too bad here, but here, of course, this whole area is quite a bit brighter, so it affects the whole thing. So it might have been smarter of me to um, just do that separately. So let's just bring that up a little bit 
and then we'll grab another brush and we'll just do this separately here and through here and just bring those whites up. And I guess we could, um, if we wanted to, we could uh, intersect this with, let's see, um, luminance range. Let's try that. What what I'm doing here is just, you'll if you look at the blacks here or the the shadows, I'm trying to adjust it so that that painting that we did. Uh, doesn't affect the shadows, doesn't brighten up the shadows, just affects the, the highlights. So let's just zoom in on that. <clears throat> that works pretty good actually. All right, let's try that. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. So, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, you'll notice that this section here is very bright. So uh, perhaps I will say, oh, well, that's it. And then I, I decided to do something else. <laughs> I'm just gonna brighten up the whites in this section back here, just ever so slightly. Perhaps something like that. And that's that's pretty much it. Let's have a look at that on the full screen. There we go. So you can see we have that slight contrast. We have the warmer tones coming through the beams of light and the trail to walk you through to the light at the back there. All right. Well, thank you ever so much, everybody, for tuning in to this week's video. I really appreciate it. I hope you got something out of this. Um, now, before I leave, I just wanted to kind of direct your attention to some things that I do have on sale on my website. I do have still have the print uh, prints on sale. Uh, they'll be on sale up until Christmas. So you can buy 11 by 14 print. And if you throw in a book or a calendar, uh, it ends up being under $50, which is a pretty good deal. And that includes shipping to anywhere in the world. So I've got 11 by 14 prints. Uh, my book, Antarctica, I still have lots of copies of this. These are going for $20 plus shipping. Or as I said, if you buy a print with it, then shipping is included. And I still have quite a few calendars. Uh, I don't want to be stuck with a bunch of calendars. So hopefully you guys will pick up a calendar. I really appreciate the support. All right, enough of that. Thank you ever so much once again, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.